evening and welcome to left, right and centre. The Supreme Court has upheld the Kerala High Court's ban on serving alcohol at restaurants and bars across Kerala, saying it found no illegality with the state's intention to clamp down. The Human Chandi government had sought the ban, saying the state had the highest consumption of alcohol and it was impacting the lives of women and children across the state. But Kerala is also one of the country's biggest tourism revenue generators. Will the state's coffers take a hit now that alcohol can only be served in prohibitively priced five-star hotels? Also on the show tonight, as 2015 comes to a close, Maharashtra has recorded the maximum number of farmers' suicides this year, over a thousand of them in Marathwada alone. The BJP leader from the Beed constituency, one of the worst hit, has talked of an Israeli-style agricultural revolution optimizing water and irrigation in drought areas. As the Fadnavis government works on long-term solutions rather than immediate relief in the form of crop loan waivers, we ask whether farmers will take hope in the plans for new techniques and whether it will reduce their burden significantly enough for the suicide rate to come down. But first, of course, Kerala's liquor ban policy approved by the Supreme Court this morning. The government of Uman Chandi introduced a policy last year to become alcohol-free within 10 years. To these elderly women selling fish, nothing has changed since the Kerala government implemented its new alcohol policy of selling hard liquor only in five-star hotels or government-run establishments. Their biggest worry still remains their husbands spending all their earnings on buying liquor. The Supreme Court has upheld the Kerala government's new alcohol policy, which was implemented in April 2014. The court cannot be blind to the fact that a social stigma, at least as far as the family unit is concerned, still attaches to the consumption of alcohol. Free trade in alcohol denudes family resources and reserves and leaves women and children as its most vulnerable victims. Over 700 bars were given one option of converting themselves into beer and wine parlours where no hard liquor is sold. The government hopes the policy is a step towards Kerala becoming a zero alcohol state in 10 years. The latest excise figures show absolute alcohol consumption levels dropped by 20.27%, that is by 2 crore 41 lakh 75,916 litres when compared to 2013-2014 figures. Beer and wine sales have increased in the last six months after bars were allowed to sell beer and wine. This will help the government in implementing the policy more effectively with the support of the people. And the social impact is very commendable. The crime rate uh, has reduced and um, the, 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 the uh, domestic violence has reduced. This industry once generated 8,000 crore rupees revenue for the state. The potential loss of a portion of this earning did not discourage the government. Bars which have been converted into beer and wine parlours, the steep decline in business remains a huge challenge and downsizing a harsh reality. I think it's unfortunate as a business part. Maybe it is uh, maybe helpful for the, uh, the public or I don't know how much it's going to affect. Furious liquor has come out in the market. Considering Kerala has been one of the highest per capita consumers of alcohol, this new alcohol policy is a bold step. But the social support systems or the social conditioning all remain a challenge. This is definitely a planned but a big gamble for the UDF government. With camera person S.V. Babu, Sneha Koshi for Indie TV. Right, well, uh, to talk about this liquor ban and what its impact is likely to be on the state uh, socially, economically, politically, we're being joined in the studio by uh, Tom Barakan of the Congress Party. We're being joined uh, from Trivandrum by Rahul Ishwaran, the author and the activist. We're also hoping uh, for Chaco Paul, the president of uh, the uh, Hoteliers Association in, in Kerala, to join us from there as well. And uh, in uh, Kolkata, Sohail Seth, the managing partner of Councillor, joining us. Us, uh, live from there. Uh, Tom Barakan, the Congress Party has said that this indicate this is a vindication of the Kerala Congress's uh, stand uh, that the Supreme Court has upheld the ban. But there are a lot of people saying if you're going to implement a ban, then it has to be uniform. Why exempt high-end hotels from something like this? Um, 
you know, is there is there a bias just inherent in, built into it? Well, essentially, this case was uh, fought by Kapil Sibalji, and he presented his case to a uh, to Justice uh, Vikramjit Sen and uh, Kirti Singh. Uh, these arguments were all brought out there. Now, the point remains: this is a ten-year uh, uh, aim of the government. It's not that tomorrow it's a switch on or switch off. There are almost uh, uh, one should say 700 bars that have been affected and there are 384 liquor shops run by the government which is operative which operates from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock late in the evening now it's not as if it's a blanket ban five stars have been mentioned because of the tourism angle now it's not that liquor is not available the bars that have been out of circulation can go in for wine or beer which is about nine percent of alcoholic content so it's not as if it's a switch on or switch off. Let me be practical on this. We have lost a lot of money in terms of excise and other things. But when it reaches a point at which the health of the state is affected, the, uh, the kind of statistics that have come out is very shocking. 19% hospitalization, 59% uh, we have uh, crime cases, 18% diverses, 40% accidents, uh, all alcohol related. Now, if these are issues that are concerning a state, the state has a responsibility and a mandate from the people for safety. There is okay. a s social security angle to it. Okay, all right. So, here, said, let me bring you into this because, you know, on the one hand, you're saying it's not a blanket ban. On the other hand, you're talking about some 10 year uh, program uh, to make Kerala a dry state. Other states in India have experimented with something like this and this experiment has failed. Uh, Tom Badakan is saying that hotels, five-star hotels have been exempted, keeping in mind the tourism angle. But do you think that really keeps the Kerala government up to date with the way tourism is? Now, people don't want to always stay in five-star hotels. There's smaller homestays, uh, you know, boutique <coughs> hotels that don't come under that category. Uh, that are losing their license to serve uh, uh, alcohol. You know, I want to tell Tom Vadakan, uh, much as I am very fond of him, there's no such thing as partial pregnancy. So, you know, either you have a ban or you don't have a ban. The problem in our country is we don't work through solutions. The only solution we always have is if something is inconvenient, if something is <clears throat> unmanageable, if something has a high social cost, we say, okay, let's ban it. We at times ban it for populism and at times we ban it because we don't have to work hard. Now here are three issues. Number one, you can easily lick this problem by having a price increase which then serves as a deterrent. Number two, we have seen wherever alcohol has been banned in a manner of speaking, you have had an enormous amount of profiteering in what I would call the transit trade or the black market. Number three, Kerala to my mind is the only inspirational state we have as far as global tourism is concerned. It is God's own country. You cannot have God's own country being denied the pleasures that tourists seek. Hmm. To then segregate five-star hotels from four-star and three-star, and as you rightly mentioned, boutique hotels, is equally silly. Yeah. The, the heart of the matter is, it is the Congress which talks about intolerance at the drop of a hat when it's, when it's about beef and when it's about this. This is as much intolerance as possible. So right. my suggestion is, yes, Tom is absolutely right. There are fatalities. There is a crisis. There is stigmatization. But we have to work through those through an awareness and education program. And it is ironic that Kerala, which has the highest literacy rate in our country, then cannot measure up in awareness terms. And I find that paradox quite amusing. So my solution is don't ban things. You know, it's the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Work through solutions. You certainly can't segregate between hotel classifications and hopefully things will be. And don't talk about a 10 year will be an alcohol free state. Yeah. Do not deny consumers their choice. We have very little choice left in this country to eat, wear, do what we want. Mm -hmm. Don't take every choice away from us. Okay. It is Be grossly unfair. Yeah, before I bring Rahul Ishwar in on this, Tom Arakan, respond to that because I mean, th that is, you know, so here it is effectively saying and what many people are, uh, are going to say as well that you are taking away the choice from the consumer. You're taking away the choice to uh, be a responsible consumer as well. 
uh, though this uh, Suhail belongs to another planet in terms of uh, liberty and uh, I mean I accept it he he's very right but having traveled on what the highway people governed no no uh, let me let me argue my case uh, traveling in a vehicle on a highway and especially if you have uh, bars around and the driver instead of taking a cup of tea goes and has a peg or two then you are, it's a nail biting finish so well i mean it's that state if you are on the highway no, and you an have a drunk issue, driver yeah, for god's sake no i am telling you the ground reality it's a five star hotel okay there are 384 shops still yeah. serving liquor from 8 o'clock to 11 they're selling Bil but not for consumption in public so what no, you can go to your hotel room and no, no, uh, Mala, uh, consume liquor Maya, yeah no, yes Maya, let me destroy his logic yeah. let me destroy his logic if there are booze shops serving booze from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Yeah. And if a driver does want to drink and then drive his vehicle, then he's what prevents drink that driver from going to that booze shop run by the state, yeah. drink and then drive? Right. All right. Rahul, you should use arguments. It's about from an accessibility. All right. Uh, so well, it's about accessibility. Tom Barakan, if liquor is available at the, at the drop of a hat right, like a Tom chemist Barakan, shop, just a moment. you Let have it. You have it. You have a problem. I agree. 384 liquor shops is still pretty accessible to a, wi a wide uh, but not on the uh, highway. A part of the community. Well, you know, the, it's all relative about where these liquor shops are located. Rahul, you should come in on this because a so, it, it really so does seem like location, a half-baked ban. Control location. Yeah. Rahul, Ishwaran. Let me demolish Suhail Seth's argument. Let me demolish Suhail Seth's argument. See, the argument of choice. I, you know, the sole, the crux of Kerala argument is this. I don't have a choice. I don't have a right not to wear seatbelt when I'm driving my own car because there is a larger implication of safety. There is a larger implication of responsibility. This seatbelt theory is the core crux of our case where we argue a person has a right to choice, but that choice is definitely below his safety, social cost and social safety. Second, Kerala is having the highest person number proportionates of suicides, divorces, depression and okay. all the sociologists attribute a huge percentage to increasing alcoholism. Third, for the past two years, Kerala is facing increase in alcoholism, drug abuse. We are facing a collapse. From God's own country, we have become booze on country. From God's own country, we have so, become devil's own country okay. and devil's own right. people. All so right. what do we do? When we understand the ground realities, you don't go for this superficial liberal argument. Rahul, Shri, uh, Rahul Ishwaran, doesn't it then make sense just to increase the price, increase taxation on absolute alcohol as a, as a way of deterring Correct. as well? Correct. Before, before you respond, I've got Sudhish Kumar, uh, who's the president of the Kerala Association the poor people. Yes. One moment, let's just get um, the Association of Kerala, the, the industry in as well. Sudhish Kumar, uh, the Supreme Court upholding uh, this ban of the Kerala High Court. Uh, how are you all taking it? Uh, very disappointing. What else can you say? Because we, we expected justice from the Supreme Court. We haven't got it. Uh, so, okay, I heard some of the discussions going on. But, you know, there are uh, states where the liquor is much more free, but there are no problems. As far as uh, alcoholism is concerned, crimes with uh, uh, connected to liquor is concerned, I saw, I heard a lady, I don't know who, who that was, she was saying it's all because of liquor. You go to Goa, you go to Karnataka, where, see, uh, our well, That's is, not a lady, that's Rahul Iswaran. Two point, two, 23 lakhs of rupees a year. Huh? And there are states... Maybe he's a bit drunk, he's confused. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's exactly what is happening now. Uh, the youngsters are going to drugs. After this uh, liquor ban, the youngsters are going to drugs. That's exactly my point. So, so... Uh, that, uh, uh, you, you're happy with that... Uh, the liquor stores or the bars are closed, All right. but let the children have drugs. Okay, Tom Badakan, let me bring you back into this because there are other states. In fact, Mizoram very recently has also lifted a prohibition. Other states have experimented with it. It has not worked. <coughs> it has not worked. I appreciate that. I'm not defending that. But a long-term process of accessibility to the... And especially underage uh, children. You see, now this has become very fashionable. It's, it's uh, the whole idea is. Tom Badakan, isn't that a dangerous argument? Because you know, you say it's underage children in Kerala. It's the, this is an issue which I is mean, rampant across imagine. the country. But we're also a country which is democratic, which has all different kinds of people in it, not just substance abusers and alcohol abusers. You're basically saying that in order to contain a percentage of the population, you're going to make sure that nobody else has the right of choice as well. 
the right of choice exists. The pr chief minister himself <coughs> said it's a 10-year experiment. He's trying to work on it. It's not like a closed door or uh, everything. There is a slow process. We okay. are ex it's a 10-year gap. The process is being experimented. If once it has fa failed in Manipur or some other state, it is not indicative that Kerala has the highest, Mizoram, highest Mizoram, yeah. level of literacy. And I'm sure <coughs> they will uh, exactly. adjust to the new changes.